Kia ora koutou. This is the second video from Jamie Sneddon's lovely um, fake complex numbers paper. This is his paper one, and I'm going to do questions 1, D and E. So this first one here is a Surds question, that's a merit question. And the second one, the locus question, is an excellence question. And this one here I'm going to go through pretty slowly because you won't have seen many of these before. Okay, so let's look first of all at this one. Um, I'm going to start by writing it out down here. Now with this one I could separately work out the stuff inside the bracket and then square it and you can do that quite elegantly but in this case I, I decided that I would just get on with doing it. So I've gone like this. So I've got 2 divided by a third expression plus 3 divided by another third expression and that's squared. So if we take a look at that we can see that we're adding two fractions together the best thing to do is usually going to be to get a common denominator. And that's going to work especially well here because I've got the difference of two squares pattern coming up. And you might notice that before you get started. Even if I didn't have that though, that's probably what I would do first here. So let's get our common denominator. The common denominator will be root 3 plus root 2 times root 3 minus root 2. And all of that's going to be squared. And then in the numerator, I'm going to have 2 times this. So remember that this fraction line operates as a big bracket. right? So that means that all of that stuff down there is in a bracket. It's often worth just putting the brackets and making them explicit. So this is what we've got now. Let's just start by expanding the denominator. Well, I get 3 plus root 6 minus root 6 minus root 2 times root 2 is 2, so 3 minus 2. So we like that a lot, we're going to get 1 in the denominator. Now, in the numerator, if we just go really slowly, we get 2 root 3 minus 2 root 2 plus 3 root 3 plus 3 root 2. Surds operate just like like terms in year 9 algebra, so we can see what combining we can do in here. Well, the first thing is that because this is 1, and 1 squared is just 1, I'm now not working with a fraction. I've got 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3 gives me 5 root 3, and I've got minus 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2, so plus root 2, and I'm going to square that. Most of you should probably write this line out. I know some of you are going to ignore that, but there you go. So now I've got 5 times 5 times root 3 times root 3. So that's going to give me 25 times 3. Here I've got plus 5 root 6. Here, what have I got here? I've got another 5 root 6. And lastly, I've got plus root 2 times root 2 is 2. Putting the whole numbers together, I get 77. And putting the like terms together, I get 10 root 6. Okay, so that's that question done. Now on to the longer one, which is the locus question. So when we work with a locus question, sometimes we can see a geometric thing straight away. As I've said before, I think on both my Saturday sessions and in my normal classes at school, when you're doing NCA level 3, you need to be careful to work algebraically. So um, in this case, we're going to work algebraically because we can't, well, I can't immediately see what's going on here. That means that I'm going to start by saying let z equal x plus i y. And I'm just going to um, substitute that in in a few places. But I'm not going to substitute it all in in a big hurry. Instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start by saying let z equal x plus i y. That means that z conjugate is x minus i y. So we're going to need that for here. Um, what about z minus 1? Well, z minus 1 will be x minus 1 plus i y. I'm going to pop that in brackets. That's those done. Now, what about here? Well, we've got the conjugate of z minus i. z minus i is going to be x plus i y minus i, which is x plus i into y minus 1. So the conjugate of that will equal z minus y minus 1i. And from here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute in this, 
and I'm going to substitute in this, and I'm going to substitute in this into here. So that's my next step. And if you've done that little simple working first, I think that helps not make mistakes in the next part. Some of the people who did this in my class last week as a test skipped a lot of these steps and made some assumptions about how we can expand the stuff here. And I think that's a bit of a risky approach because you haven't really shown that you can do it. Okay, so we're just going to go for the basic approach, which is to substitute everything in. And we are going to get quite a lot of algebra. So what do we need? On the left-hand side, we've got um, not Z. Replace the Z with X plus IY. And then it's going to be times this one here. X minus Y minus 1I. And that equals the conjugate of Z. X minus IY times Z minus 1, which is this. So to do excellence questions with level 3 or scholarship ones, you have to be really confident with your expanding skills. But notice how helpful it is to have put the, the imaginary bit into a bracket here and the real bit into a bracket here. Now I'm going to get on with expanding in the usual quadratic way, and some things are going to cancel out. So we get x squared plus xyi minus x times y minus 1i, and then I'm going to get minus y times y minus 1, i squared. So that's this, 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 and then this. Next up over here, I'm going to get x times x minus 1 minus, now this term here, I'm going to do this expansion kind of in two bits. So it's going to be minus xyi plus yi. All right, so that's that times that. Next, I've got plus ixy. Let's just write that in the same order. So plus i, sorry, plus xyi. So now that term there that I just said is that one there. And lastly, I'm going to have minus y squared i squared. Now, there's no need to freak out about that. If you go slowly, you're not going to make a mistake. And it's better to go slowly than to rush it and then have to fix it up later. Let's just keep on going with the expanding bits. We've got x squared plus xyi minus xyi, that's from here, plus xi minus, so here we've got minus i squared, so that's plus y, y, y minus 1. I'm just pausing because I can hear my dog waking up. Okay, so plus y times y minus 1. And cleaning up this next side, I get x squared minus x, minus xyi, plus yi, plus xyi, plus y squared, right? What a big mess. But a whole lot of stuff is going to um, simplify away. I'm going to do a different colored pen for that. So we've got x squared here and x squared here. Um, here we've got xyi minus xyi straight away. So on this side I'm left with xi plus y squared minus y. Um, what have I got over here? Well again, I've got a minus xyi and a plus xyi. And we've got negative x plus yi plus y squared. So happily, the plus y squared simplifies on both sides. That leaves me with xi minus y is equal to negative x plus yi. So any x and y values that satisfy this are on the locus, the set of points that we're after. Let's look at what we can do with this. If we get everything to one side, we can say that 0 is equal to y minus x plus y minus x i. And remember that 0 is the same as 0 plus 0 i. So what we need to have here is that 0 is equal to y minus x. That's from matching up that bit. And from matching up the next bit, we get the same thing. 0 is equal to y minus x. So here what I'm doing is I'm matching my real part, which gives me this condition. But I'm also going to check my imaginary part, which is this 0. And that's the same. So there's only one condition here. So what does that mean? It means the locus of points... 
back in star, the thing at the start, is the set of points such that x is equal to y. But we weren't asked to stop there, right? What we were asked for is to find the range of values of r, z. So we're going to draw a picture now. Um, I might even use a ruler because I've got time because I've only used up 10 minutes. So here's my little argon diagram. Oh, I love how this tells me when it's perpendicular. There we go. Okay. Now, if we want to draw the line x is equal to y, we're going to have this. Oh, I need my ruler again. x equals y is going to be a 45 degree line. You don't have to get it dead right, but you might as well if you have the computer. And now we have to ask what's the argument of those. So for x positive, we're up here, and the argument of that part of the locus is 45 degrees or pi on 4. Either of those is fine. I don't think it asks to work in radians. But if x is negative, then I'm down here. And I get, um, what do I get? Arg z is equal to negative 3 pi on 4, which is negative 135 degrees. So that's for x negative. So they are the two values for arg z. So that's the range of values. So arg z is pi on 4 or negative 3 pi on 4. I just want to go back up to the question and check one last thing. Um, that is whether 0, 0 is a solution. But the trouble with the point, the origin, is that the arg is not really defined there, right? Because it's a point. I wouldn't get too hung up on that. So just um, the way that Jamie Sneddon's mark schedule marks this is if you get this value, then you get an E7 for the question. And if you get both values, then you get the full E8. So there you go. I think that that's um, it's quite a nice locus question because you can't see straight away from looking what's going on. And it really makes you work through some, um, some substitution techniques. So this is a question that is well worth just putting to one side and putting a, like a calendar reminder on your phone for in six weeks or two months to come back to this question and have a look at it. I'm sure that most of you will find it far, far easier in a couple of months from now than, than you have at the moment. Thanks for watching. I'll do a few more of the questions over the next day or two.